Fast but explosive, why the Ferrari engine is a time bomb. Going into the 2022 season, we've seen a massive improvement from Ferrari. The team managed to rack up the first 1-2 finish at the season opener in Bahrain for the first time after quite some time. However, the team saw a downfall in their performance, a huge part of it going to the missed tactics and reliability issues. But tactics can be reverted and learned from. The engine's failure is what hurt Ferrari the most. So without further ado, let us dive into what's wrong with Ferrari and how they can fix their engines. After a brilliant start to the season and Leclerc racking up 46 points difference between him and Verstappen, things started to look sad for Ferrari. First, Leclerc spun in Emilia Romagna, falling from P3 to P6 as Verstappen won the race and Perez secured the 1-2 finish. In Barcelona, Leclerc's turbocharger failed in a race that was set to be dominated by the Monegasque as his rivals were nowhere to be found on the map. Baku showed yet another problem with the reliability of Ferrari's engines, as both of their cars retired early and gave Red Bull yet another 1-2 finish after Spain. Problems have piled up so easy in the season that Leclerc was forced to take his fourth engine, the one that applies a penalty, and start at the back of the grid in Montreal, around 10 in the season. F1 engines aren't designed to last for eternity, as their average lifespan is between 5-8 to eight races. However, Picking up your fourth engine so early in the season means that your team is in huge problems. For example, Verstappen took his fourth engine last season in Sokochi, round 15, while Hamilton took a new engine and started from the back in Interlagos, Brazil, round 19. Sainz took his new engine in France in round 12 after the blow-up in Austria, and it's safe to say that Ferrari is running away further and further from their championship hopes. And with the other constructors that run with Ferrari's aggregates, HAAS and Alfa Romeo, also struggling with engine failures, it's safe to say that Ferrari is on a bad path with its engines. So what makes this engine so unreliable? It's worth mentioning that reliability is one of the strongest, if not the strongest factor that an engine can have. Sure, the speed needs to be there, and if you have an unreliable but fast engine, it's easily fixed, as the slow but reliable engine cannot be upgraded. However, we've seen how Mercedes dominated the turbo hybrid era from 2014 with their engines, and we've seen how they racked up podiums with their slow but reliable engines, always capitalizing on other teams' mistakes. Compared to them, Red Bull also has a fast but unreliable engine at the beginning of the season. We've seen Max Verstappen retiring in Bahrain and Australia, and Perez retiring in Bahrain and Montreal due to reliability issues. However, Red Bull has gotten on top of its problems, as we've seen them dominate even more than ever. To compare how huge the engine reliability is for Ferrari-powered instructors, Botas has been running on his third turbocharger in MGUK since Baku, while Magnussen had to take a new engine along with Sainz in France. For things to be sadder for Magnussen, he even failed to finish the race. The reliability of Ferrari hasn't gone unnoticed by the team boss Bonotto, who said it after the Baku go catastrophe in the team. Certainly it's a concern. We said it even before coming here in Baku. Reliability is always a key factor in the battle," said Bonotto. Now, let's talk about the F1 engines and which parts are most fragile in Ferrari's cars. An F1 engine consists of multiple components, and one of the most important ones is the MGUK, Motor Generator Unit Kinetic. This part of the engine is activated when a car is braking, as it operates as a generator and recovers any injury from the deceleration wheels back into the energy store in the engine. However, the most important part of an F1 engine is the ICE, otherwise known as internal combustion engine. This component is the same as in any other normal road car, as it generates movement for the car along the track and it connects the chassis of the car to the gearbox. The turbocharger was introduced in 2014, when F1 entered the turbo hybrid era. Its purpose is to increase the density of the air that the engine consumes, giving the engine more power and allowing it to go quicker. The MGUH motor generator unit heat is attached to the turbocharger. This part harnesses any of the excess energy produced from the exhaust. The MGUK and MGUH will get all of the energy to power the car from the energy store ES. Then, these will provide the driver with a boost, which is given to the driver when he presses the ERS button on the steering wheel. Another important part of an F1 car is CE or control electronics. They are also limited to use, and the initial penalty of Saints for changing just control electronics was 10 places. However, 
the team opted to take all the new components and dash through the field from last place. Control Electronics is a very important car in Formula 1 because if it fails, the driver will most likely retire from the race because he won't be able to operate any of the systems on the car. For example, DRS won't open, brakes won't work, gearbox, throttle, and many other systems will fail. With Ferrari, difficult stuff has failed in their multiple DNFs this season. As we said above, the turbocharger failed in Leclerc's DNF in Barcelona, and that could be heard from the sound that the engine makes. Not just that, the light smoke that comes out of the exhaust also points out a turbocharger failure. With Sainz, it was most likely a hydraulics issue. Hydraulics issues aren't involved with the engine reliability, but they are also a very important part of the car, given the fact that Sainz wasn't able to continue the race after enduring problems with it. As for Sainz and his stint in Austria, the defect was so catastrophic that the engine caught fire in just a couple of seconds. Here, Sane suffered from issues on the hybrid part and forced induction. Compared to Baku, it was a very different issue, as there the problems were the valves and the cylinder head. The MGUH or the heat generator produces energy to recharge the battery or to generate power. This part accelerates the turbo and increases the forced induction. It's also important that this factor adds to the component's stress. In order to increase the regeneration of the energy, the exhaust gas pressure on the turbo is enhanced. This factor gives acceleration to the MGUH, but with more stresses on the rotor, the housing, and the electric engine. The MGUH, which is also used to stop the turbo thrust, enables the modulation of the forced induction, perfecting the torque supply. The derotation of the electric engine pushing on the opposite side of the turbine causes massive stress on the electric engine. When Sainz was suffering in Austria and partly due to its interaction between the hybrid and the forced induction, at the same time, this is now the weak element that creates reliability issues. With that being said, Ferrari is now far away from both of the championships. What started out as a perfect 1-2 finish season has turned out to be a nightmare for Ferrari. The 2023 engines are going to be developed based on the data that the team has now. More precisely, 2023, 2024, and 2025 seasons are going to be engine frozen ones. This means that Ferrari needs to work with what they got, and they need to make it as reliable as they can for the remainder of the season, as Verstappen is very far away ahead. They are now closer to fighting with Mercedes than they are with Red Bull, and although this isn't in the race, the points in both the championships say otherwise. Thanks to the reliability of their engines, Mercedes has been able to pick up decent points after starting their season far away from what they expected. The team is already focused on the 2023 season and the improvements that need to be made there, as the proposing phenomenon hurt them severely. However, Ferrari seems to be in bigger trouble when it comes to championship aspirations, as they need to get on top of their problems as soon as possible, because Red Bull doesn't seem to stop anywhere near soon.